one of the staples of my uh, my clothing was argyles. I wore argyle socks and argyle <laughs> sweaters. Along with, you know, having this style, and I kind of mentioned it initially with, you know, somewhat being overdressed, maybe in comparison to people of my same age, I always wanted to be set apart. One of my, I guess, triggers is you see a man with a really nice suit or a really nice outfit and, and his shoes are kind of beat up, worn. And I know sometimes I've had situations where my shoes have been maybe overly worn. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Andrea Patrick, the BU Boss, and another episode of Your Style Story. If you remember correctly, last week we had a special guest, Miss Katrina, and she interviewed me. This week we have another special guest. This is my boo, Joseph, and he has graciously agreed to share his style story with us. I'm super excited about it because, you know, dare I say, my husband does look nice all the time. So much so that I used to say to him, why can't we just dress down for a change? Because he always looks so nice. And I, sometimes I just want to be casual. Thank you, honey. You're very welcome. So we just got back from church. So we are doing this very quickly, but I thought that the guys that watch this channel or maybe some of the wives who watch this channel and want to help their spouses create a style story that will work better for them may be interested in this video. So we're gonna dive right into it by asking Mr. Patrick to tell us about his look today. So tell me about your look today. What, do you, what is it saying? What are we doing? Well, I mean, it's um, it helps in when it's getting hotter to be able to stay cool. And linen is, is a fabric is, you know, in my, in my repertoire of clothing. So it's always is, typically something that I always have and I haven't had a lot of it lately and I haven't been buying a lot of clothes since the pandemic. Okay. So I happened to be in a store, we were shopping for something else, but it just so happened that it was, they had some men's clothes near. And so I said, hey, let me go over and take a look. And I happened to run across a couple of nice linen pieces, a couple of pants, two pairs of pants and a shirt. And I said, hey, why don't we just start here? Well, what does this look say? This all It's an all linen look, by the way, guys. He's got on a linen shirt and linen pants. What does that say? I mean, you look very, you know, breezy. It's cool, casual. Today is one of the warmer days and um, it's Sunday. So we did have to go to church. We, did, we didn't have to go to church. We, we go to church as a normal part of our, of our weekly duties and uh, what we do. But it's cool, casual. It's cool, but it's still dressy enough, I think to wear at church and to look nice. Yeah, we're gonna get into your style story in just a second. So, all right, so let's dive into some of these questions. At what age do you think looking nice or putting yourself together became something you were interested in? Yeah, probably junior high school. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I probably overdressed a lot in <laughs> high school and my, sort of my style and that one of the things I used, to, one of the staples of my, my, um, uh, my clothing was Argyles. I wore Argyle socks and Argyle <laughs> sweaters. A I can lot. only imagine you in high yeah, school. Yeah, and I wore hard bottom shoes and, and nice pants. And I think a lot of it was just influenced by seeing my father, how he dressed. And you know what's well a little bit ironic is that, you know, he worked a lot with his hands. He was more of a blue collar worker. Mm -hmm. But on the weekends when he went to church and when we went out and did different things, he used to dress really nice. So So that's who you would say, we were gonna get to that question, who your style influence Absolutely, was. Yeah. Your dad, your dad. <laughs> okay. I like that. I like that. So when you say he was your influence, you're saying he was a blue collar worker, but you kind of noticed when he dressed up those occasions. Mm -hmm. So how would you say, this really wasn't a question guys, so he's gonna be hit off the fly with this one, but how would you say um, the uh, circumstances around that look influenced you? Because I've said on this channel before how I was influenced by my mom and my grandparents and like Dynasty and Knott's Landing and shows like that because it showed some affluence. It had a, it was a lifestyle that I enjoyed. So that was mm -hmm. also a part of how I sort of constructed my style story. So as your, we know your dad was a blue collar worker, but it seems your style influence came when he was doing more affluent things like going to church or getting dressed up for dinners. Mm -hmm. How would you say, how much do you think the circumstances around the attire that influenced you 
also contributed? Um, well, here's how I would answer that question. What I would say is, along with, you know, having this style, and I kind of mentioned it initially with, you know, somewhat being overdressed, maybe in comparison to people of my same age, I always wanted to be set apart. Mm. Um, and mm. I didn't want to go, I, I've never really wanted to look like everybody else. So I would try different things sometimes. But a lot of the reason that I developed, you know, a taste and a style for nice clothes and looking nice is just really to set myself apart. And I felt like my father did that in a lot of different ways. And one of the ways was, you know, his dress. Nice. I love that. So I think, wives, this is a great takeaway um, when you're learning about how your spouse was brought up and kind of asking some of these questions, especially if you're the person who buys the clothes for your husband. I don't buy my husband's clothes. He has better fashion sense than I do, if I'm being honest. I had opened my eyes to a whole world of luxury things when we first met. So um, I'm not the wife that buys the husband's clothes. But all right, so that was the first round of questions. And now I have a game that we're going to play. And if you watched last week, you know that we played the game Pinwheel. So what we're going to do is I have a pinwheel with a lot of different fashion styles for men. And we're gonna have him spin the wheel and he's going to land on a specific style that is not his style. Now, Joseph asked, he, he thinks that he's more of a classic style dresser, I would say, with a hint of kind of a pop Trends, trend, trendy, yeah. yeah. Um, so we're going to see what the what he lands on, and then we're going to go over to Pinterest, and we're going to pick a style that is not his style, the one that he uh, the pin falls on, and he is going to have to transition that particular look to transition it over into what his actual style is. So it's a fun game because I think sometimes we have things in our wardrobes, guys, and it may not be where we are now. It may have been when we were just not thinking about the fact that our style says something about us and speaks a message for us. And so we're trying to change that narrative now. And we may not have a budget to go in and buy an, an entire new, entirely new wardrobe, but we can take this game and sort of learn how we can make certain tweaks and things so that uh, we can sort of start to transition our wardrobe with what we have. So we're gonna play that game. All right guys, so here we go. The pin is ready and on it we have sporty, debonair, we have creative, and we have comfy, cozy. I will label you as the debonair babe. So if you land on that, you gotta spin again. And then we have a celebrity wild card. Now, if we pick the celebrity wild card, that means we're going to find a celebrity on the red carpet whose style is not the same as Joseph's, and he's going to tweak that to match his style as close as possible. So that is how we play the game. All right, Joseph, we're gonna turn it around and I want you to hit that spin the wheel button. All right, guys, he landed on Comfy Cozy. All right, so Joseph, we're gonna go to Pinterest and we are gonna find the Comfy Cozy and you're gonna tell us how you would switch the outfit to match your style. Okay. So we have found this comfy style, guys. It's this comfy style. And so what I want you to do is tell us how would you make this into the debonair style that you like to watch? Okay. So first things, um, those pants need to be a little more fitted, like maybe some joggers, the way they're bunched up around the bottom. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Uh, the shoes maybe be okay. I mean, the shoes might be okay. So when I'm looking for, even for X shoes that I wanna walk in or exercise in, I'm still looking for something that's gonna be, gonna set me apart. The, I like the, um, the t-shirt underneath the the jacket, I mean the sweater, sweater, but the sweater, yeah, that needs to be a bit more fitted for me. And then I would I would probably leave, you know, the beanie or the the hat, you know, where it is. But definitely not the socks on the outside yeah. of the pants. Mm -hmm. And I can definitely see you in a different shoe. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Okay, so. Joseph did a great job with that, don't you guys think? I hope that was helpful to you all. I love the pinwheel game. We played it last week as well. And um, I tried my hand at it, so it is quite fun. Let's move on with our questions. And I wanna know from you, Joseph, what are three elements you believe speak a man's style story? Okay, um, so foremost, I would say 
the shoes mm. are um, a really clear indicator. One of my, I guess, triggers is you see a man with a really nice suit or a really nice outfit and and his shoes are kind of beat up, worn. And I know some, I've had situations where my shoes have been maybe overly worn, but... Nothing a good polish. Yeah, exactly. A just wipe polish, it off. Wipe just wipe the off. dirt off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> as simple as wiping the dirt off, guys. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, that that is one thing. And then I think the other thing is is when you when I'm putting together outfits, um, and it took me a while to get to this point, but just understanding that small accent, mm. like a, a pocket square, mm -hmm. um, a watch or a ring, and, Your and small accessories, jewelry the accessories. accessories can really make a difference mm -hmm. in how people perceive you and what they see. And sometimes you can actually wear bracelets and things that give that have a story. Right. Like for instance, this, um, you know, this necklace I got from a man who had gone through a couple of um, uh, uh, artery transplant, organ transplants. Mm -hmm. And um, so when I wear it, I think about him. It makes me think about how blessed I am but it also makes me look at him for inspiration because mm. he's still living a very blessed life with his sons, even wow. though he's had, you know, these these issues. So you can always kind of dress yourself up with different accessories, but then those accessories also paint part of a story that you mm. can talk to people about. As well. Oh, that's so good. That is good. Good job, babe. Thank What's you. the third thing? You got accessories. You got shoes. Um, and I think it's also it kind of goes back to setting yourself apart. You know, there. You know, a lot Having of people a would, signature. Yeah, people had, tend to dress based on what they see, what's being presented to them. <laughs> but how do you take that and make it your own, right? How do you take what you what you see and what you see people doing and make that your own? Um, I'm trying to think of a, a really good example, like ties. I think ties are a big point, a big part of your style. It's another accessory, but ties and shirts, like what? kind of button down shirt makes sense like for what, you. Like what's the collar. The collar, yeah. And then how collar. do you tie the tie? Because exactly. I, when I was styling, I remember there are so many different ways to tie a tie and each of them sort of speak to the personality yeah. of the person wearing the tie. So that's one way. It really gets into the details of what you're trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. And it just really does start to tell a story about you guys. That's what, that's the whole point of your style story is to really teach you how to communicate your brand story, to leverage who you are, to find the success and, and really get people to identify more closely with you and attract, engage, and convert the right audience, whether you're in business. So this is true for life, career, and or business. We speak about that here on this channel. As you know, it's all about real tips, real talk, so that you can find real success in your life, career, and or business. And this style story is one way. It is a nonverbal communication that is happening whether you like it or not. And so I'm loving that we've got real people on the show. Fashion is great. I love fashion vloggers. I have my favorites. I'll even link them down in the description. But the truth of the matter is we're not all fashion vloggers. We don't live the fashion life, but we still are speaking that style story in our business, in our careers, and with our families and in our community. So I think Joseph has given us great tips already without even knowing it as to why it's important for us to really start to be intentional. All right, so we've played the game. Let's head into these next round of questions again. Let's get back to them. So what are your style pet peeves? You mentioned one about the shoes, not having dusty mm -hmm. shoes. Do you have another pet peeve that you know you see well, men doing? Probably dirty shoes is one. Um, uh, pants and jackets that aren't they don't fit properly. Ill-fitting. Yeah, ill-fitting. Either they're, they need to be hemmed or perhaps the jacket is too long on the sleeve. Um, you know, those just the, those are really the couple of things that I kind of Y'all, my husband and I, we've been married for, it'll be 29 years, and we've been together for 33 years. And I can tell you for all 33 years, one of the funniest things and, and most memorable um, things that I know about my husband as it relates to fashion and style is we would be watching award shows on television and my husband can look at a pair of pants from our sofa, the TV being 
feats and feats away. And he could talk about the hem on the pants. He could talk about the stitching on the suit. He knows about the ties and the shirts and he understands his quality. And I just, I think, it, I thought it was so funny. But now I really do appreciate it because it is, it when he's purchasing for me, I know that I'm going to get quality. But it's just so funny that these are your pet peeves and he, yeah. these really are his pet peeves. It's quite and, funny. And it, and it says a lot about how, what you're, what you think of yourself too, in terms of if you're willing to invest. And I'm not, I know, Clothes now, you can get nice looking clothes for, you know, you, you don't have to pay this a lot outfit, of money. This outfit, this yeah, outfit, it's the all in an outfit money. that you got from TJ Maxx. But it does, it shows that you take the time not only to invest what it takes to pay for it, but also that you take the time. I have to go through and I really take my time when I'm buying things. So he I does. don't just buy things. He doesn't. I have to go in and if, if it's a big sale, I probably won't buy anything because I want to take my time and go through and really pick the things that I want to wear. That's and a not, great lesson not just for everybody. For I, the sake of it. I think that's yeah. a great lesson for us all to take away, me included, because a girl will take, a, she will tackle a sale. Um, but I think another lesson that he just mentioned that, you know, I didn't even have a question for it, but I do believe that I'm gonna ask it, is the, the idea that your clothes do tell people what you think about yourself and your abilities and whether or not you're credible. So my husband is a director, right? Yeah. He's a director on his job and he hires people, he interviews people. Tell us a little bit about the, I mean, and I know that we're in a world of digital interviews and that we're not really meeting in person anymore, but you do do dinners, you go out to dinners with people and just looking at the way people show up to those dinners or show up on the Zoom interview, are those things that you consider when you are, you know, talking to them about their job. I mean, do you look at them and say, okay, he, he could have shown up a little bit better for this or he could have done a little bit better job? I think you have to um, because in my business, um, you the, we're customer facing. So we show we have to go and a lot of times we are out at dinners and in meetings with, uh, with customers. So absolutely, you, you don't need to show up dressed to the nines, but you do need to show up and be presentable. And the other thing with it, with dress, even though you want it to kind of tell a story, you don't want it to be the only story right. in a business setting. That's you great. want it to accent who you are and your real value. But not take away from or overshadow. Or overshadow. I love exactly. that. Right? Yeah. See guys, your style story matters. What yes, you're saying it does. matters. All right, so what <laughs> is your style uniform? If you've watched for a while, you know that I did a video called How to Minimize Your Choices and Optimize your options. But I talked about having a style uniform so that it makes it easy for you to be consistent in your style story. So do you have a style uniform that you would say? Yeah, mm -hmm. so I mean, either jeans or khakis, you know, pants, um, not too casual, not too dressy, but that's, you know, typical of what I would, slacks. I might wear even into a customer environment, slacks. You don't hear that word too often anymore, <laughs> but absolutely, that's a good way to describe them. And then either a button down and or a polo that that is nice, you know, yeah. um, and not too not too many design patterns and things mm -hmm. of that nature. So it is it doesn't draw too much attention. And then, you know, I, I don't wear as many dress shoes anymore as I used to, but they, they do have shoes now that are that kind of blend comfort mm -hmm. and, you know, um, you know, a nice dress shoe, a leather, you know, dress yeah. shoe. So wearing those, and then you know a watch and and my ring and you know a couple of these things. I normally won't wear jewelry like this to a customer meeting, but just casual okay. day, yeah, I'll wear that. Yeah. Yeah, and one thing, I mean, he mentioned before he doesn't like the ill-fitting clothing, so he is one to tuck his shirt, have the belt on. He doesn't. I don't think outside of a pair of shorts and a polo, in that like a very casual setting, he will do his his polo on the outside of his of his pants, of his waistline. Oh, absolutely. But if he's like, if it's slacks and a shirt, uh, button down, polo, whatever, you best believe it's going to be tucked. The belt is going to match the shoes. He's very particular yeah. about these things. So great, 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 great. All right, so let's go into our last game of the episode. And it is called Friend or Trend. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of the trends for men this summer. And I'm going to ask Joseph, is this a, a trend, meaning it's something that he's going to let everybody else enjoy, or is it a friend? It's something that he can't incorporate into his wardrobe. And I think this will be a fun game because it just shows you what some of the trends are. 
And um, if you are, if you match his debonair style, then you might find some interest in some of the things that he picks and how he will incorporate them into his wardrobe. So we're talking about trends now. And the first trend is like, it says that menswear is heading towards a sober and severe structure. So we are looking at the men's suit where it's more structured, more like pulled together, a little more serious. Is mm -hmm. this going to be a trend or a friend? Oh, that's probably going to be a friend. I think so. <laughs> yeah. This, you haven't worn a double-breasted suit in a while, but... Exactly. But it's still a structured look that yeah. you would like. I like that. All right, let's move on to the beanie, baby. Is this a friend or a trend? I started doing more beanies, so I think that's a friend. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. We used to call these toboggans. When did they become beanies? Well, some places you go and you say toboggan and they think it's an apparatus you slide down the slope. Really? Down. Yeah, toboggan racing. We grew up with toboggan. I've, I've had that experience. Okay. Let's see. What about, oh my, look at that short jacket. The short jacket. Is this going to be a friend or a trend? And trend is something that I'm going to let go by. Trend is going to, you let, you're going to let somebody else deal with this. Yeah, I'm probably going to allow someone else to deal with the short jacket. What about the oversized? I think this is going to be the oversized uh, trench coat. That's going to have to probably be a trend. So this is like it hits the knee. Let me see. It says like like how one out there are only two coat lengths now. The shorter one, and then option two is you let it hit your knees. Nothing more dramatic than watching a person. Okay, so look, those are the trends. That's going to be more of a trend. Okay. I just, I mean, I'm. You have trench coats, but you don't do. really. Yeah, but it, it, I mean, it's, it's it's rare to wear them around here because it's so warm, even in the winter. But um, I really have gotten into more of a fitted look. Mm -hmm. I think it looks better on me. And so going back to the oversize is, is going to be a minute for me. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, let's do one more. What about shoes with unisex appeal that's gonna have to be a trend <laughs> no prints for you huh mm -hmm. that's okay. <laughs> all right that does it for this game thank you for playing <laughs> nothing there's anything wrong with those thank that's you for you playing want. yes but that is definitely that's not, not your me. style mm -hmm. Alright guys, if you are enjoying your style story so far, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell so that you don't miss this series. Now in addition to your style story, I'm also sharing my ordinary everyday marketing strategy leadership tips that are happening on Thursdays. So be sure to tap into those as well because again, I'm giving you real talk on real tips and strategies to help you find real success in your life, career, and or business. Additionally, I am going to be opening the doors to Project CEO very, very soon, and we have made some adjustments to your ability to access this program. When we launched it the first time, we had people asking us for other ways to join, and we sat down as a team and we came up with something. You asked for it and we're giving it to you. So make sure you are on the wait list for Project CEO to be notified when we will be opening the doors and get the information about the way you can access it that's a little bit different and much more accessible than the last launch. All right, thank you again. Let's get back to our video with my honey, Joseph. All right, the last segment we're gonna ask questions about today is we're gonna talk about style crushes. Now, who was your first celebrity style crush and what was it about them that you were oh drawn to? Well, um... Let me think. I've got a couple in mind. So, first celebrity style crush was Morris Day. Oh, Lordy. In, in the movie with Prince. What was the name of the Purple movie? Rain. Purple Rain. Purple Rain, yeah. 
<laughs> that was the first one. The white suit. I knew it. Or the no, the gray satin suit mm -hmm. with the white coat. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was all over it. <laughs> I was all over it. And the second one that I remember, I had a style crush on, is the guy in the Beat It video with the <laughs> with white the jacket. dragon on the back jacket. <laughs> Had to have that. I look. I still look for that jacket even today. <laughs> I'm like looking for that jacket. If you have that jacket, please comment below yeah, I, so we can find it. <laughs> and I found, I found a, I found a happy medium with the Morris Day, mm -hmm. Day, uh, the the white satin suit. In my high school years, I found. Is I found that the a, one on your mom's the, counter when you were in the gray suit? Like a senior picture or something? Yes, yeah, a senior picture. It's actually white with gray that's pinstripes. That's it, that's it. Yeah, and it kind of had a uh... little bit of a thing on the shoulder. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was it. So funny, y'all. He gets just as excited about fashion. white shoes fashion. and the whole nine, yes. <laughs> he gets just as excited as I do. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, okay. How do you want people to read your personal style story? When they see you, when you walk into a room, um, if you're like, you do presentations a lot, you go to sales um, kickoffs and things like that. When you walk into a room, what do you want your style to say about you? Before you speak to anyone, what are you, what are you, what are you going for? No, I, what, well, I wanted to say that, you know, I wanted to set me apart. Um, I wanted to show that I am um, forward looking um, but not out of touch, mm, right? And good. and I wanted also to make people feel comfortable with me, with asking questions and and coming up to me and you know, genuinely show, genuinely give them the the appeal that you know I can answer their questions, I can help them. That's what I'm looking for. I love that you do that, baby. Now, what do you think? If you had to guess, if you if you were like really thinking about it, what are you most complimented on about your personal style? Oh boy, that's uh, that's interesting. It depends on the where you are, right? The context. The context of, of where you are. Um, a lot of my compliments I get from you that I look very nice. He always um, does. But just on the arrangement, putting things together, um, also making sure that you know my shoes are. <laughs> <laughs> you do get compliments on your shoes because you. I think your shoes are one way that you set yourself apart. Like. Like most guys, we live in Texas, so you have guys who, you know, always have on cowboy boots, but Joseph has boots. They're not cowboy boots, but they're like a very slick. A Chelsea boot. Yeah, yeah it's, they're, it's really they're nice. very, I mean, he, these are like nice boots. He's like, oh my gosh, where'd you get those boots? So you do set yourself apart. Wearing things that are fun, you mm -hmm. know, that, that are Oh, he just loves a, fun socks. Yeah, you always fun get socks. Compliments and then, on your yeah, socks. things that are just fun, that are different, that kind of set you apart, that are, tr that, that, stay within the trend. Are these compliments though? Because we getting into the trend. These people yeah, compliment you. What are they, they complimenting do. you on? I mean, they'll just say that, yeah, yeah. I like your boots. Yeah. Or I like the way you did this outfit. Or yeah. You look nice. Yeah. 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 You, do, you do, you do, you do a bit of a Okay. Do you take any risks with your style? Every once in a while, I do something that's a little risque. Yeah. He, he cuts his hair sometimes differently. You'll come home. Yeah, I'm actually thinking about changing my hair. Oh, here we go, guys. Um, and doing one something year, radically different. One year, he was looking for this. I got, he wanted this sponge that he can just roll on his hair and it would make his hair curl up. The Bart Simpson, yeah. The Bart Simpson, it has a name. Yeah, The Bart does. Simpson, it okay. Does. So, yeah. He, he, I remember in high school, so this is one area I really took a big risk in high school. So everybody, we were, it was an era of like break dancing. Oh yeah. And pop, pop locking and doing all those things. Hip hop was kind of beginning to come on the scene. Late eighties, early nineties. Um, and everybody wore jeans. <clears throat> but what I did was I took my jeans and from probably the knee down, uh -huh. I put um, safety pins in, uh, you know, regular in spaces uh -huh. and then within the safety pins i took you know everybody wore the fat uh people were wearing the the fat um shoe strings yeah. in their shoes i took those and wove those inside <laughs> my jeans and warmed the school I mean, everybody thought that of, was cool i did it two or three times it was mixed reviews mixed reviews <laughs> well that was a risk but it was a risk it thing. was yeah it was. but then Good some job. other people did it also oh you had some some other some, some followers some followers Come on, yeah followers. didn't catch on but yeah <laughs> All right, so the last question is, do you think your style story is complete? Are there any any tales you feel you need to tell with it that you haven't done so far that you'd like to maybe add to the conversation? 
Um, the only thing I would say about myself is that sometimes I get so picky. I'm so apprehensive about buying the wrong thing that I won't take chances the way I should and just get the thing. I'm looking forward to really, really fit all of these, check all of these boxes. So I maybe won't purchase something that I like, that I know that I would like and would wear, simply because it doesn't check all the boxes. So be, be ready to take a chance on yourself in the moment um, and buy what you want. But do you think your conversation, you told us what you wanted your style to say when you were not in the room. I mean, when you walked in the room before you spoke. And I think you do a good job, you know, with that message. Is there anything that you're not speaking that you feel needs to sh be shown in, in my your style, style story? Like when you walk in the room, is there something like you're, you're, you're obviously, you know, conveying confidence. You're obviously conveying approachability. You're obviously conveying um, you're conveying the things that you said you want to convey. Is there something like, I, I mean, I could say, and you tell me if you agree, that you could, you could kind of start to convey a little bit more fun, a little bit more, a mm. little bit more whimsy. Okay. You know, like you have the standout, you've got the comfortability, you've got the credibility, but like maybe like the, the unexpected, like the fun, like, mm, okay, Joe, I didn't know. Really? Okay. You think you can okay. add that? But how would I do that? What would it be? I don't something know. That's the, that's, the, uh, that's the fun of creating your style story. Wear more babe. joggers or? That's the fun of creating your style story. Okay. You know, well, that's, that's the whole point of the show is okay. to really understand like your style story. And if there are pieces of the conversation that, you know, your personality that you feel are missing from that conversation, then how can you add it? Right? Like okay. that. That's what I'm saying. So, guys, I thank you, honey, for being on the show. Is thank he not you. the cutest, guys? Ladies, don't be leaving comments, because I mean it. <laughs> uh, I'm serious about this one. You'll get in trouble. Anyways, thanks, babe, for being on the show. to understand what you need to do and be your best all together anyway. And we talk about that all the time here on how you can be real, how you can be authentic and transparent. Guys, listen, I'm so excited about your style story. I just think that it is a great way for you to discover ways to use what you have in your closet to start speaking that narrative that you want to speak, to start showing up at those events, on your job, with your customers, really being able to speak the nonverbal messaging that is gonna showcase to them that you are the real deal and you've got your stuff together, leveraging yourself appropriately. So please make sure that you hit that subscribe button. Remember, I'm Andrea Patrick, the BU Boss, and I want you to be unique, be unstoppable, and be unafraid in your style story. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit that subscribe button. See you next week for another episode.